Hello, listeners. You're listening to Historical AF, or, if you cuss like we do, Historical As Fuck. We are two librarians and a historian bringing boozy historical nuggets of the weird, funny, spooky, and morbid to your ear holes. <laughs> Welcome to episode 16. I'm Natalie. I'm Keena. And I'm Ashley. Woo! Yay! <laughs> New yeah. intro. What, what? New intro is amazing. And for those of you who keep up with us week to week and on our social media, Natalie is now a fixture. That's right. The queens of TMI have another queen. And it's and awesome. now the tri-state queens of TMI. What? Oh That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie's like, what, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, Natalie's like, I'm leaving. We are already bad. TMI. Okay, too much TMI already. <laughs> yes. Ah, too bad. It's official. You're stuck. Yep. Sorry, bro. <laughs> okay. At least I get to drink during this. That's fun. <laughs> yes, that's True. the best like, part. The best job. And we're doing our drunk dive later, so we're going to get hammered. Oh, so, I've already oh been I'm drinking. probably going to be hammered now. by then. By the time we get to that. We're recording yeah. everything today, just so yeah. y'all, everyone knows. So if you've not signed up for Patreon, you should, because our drunk dives, we get just sloshed, and then we bitch about historical inaccuracies of movies. And today is a doozy, because I have so much rage about indiana jones and the crystal skull so you need to sign up right now yeah stop what you're doing sign up throw five bucks at us and then listen to this beautiful gym that is going to happen later so crazy drunkenness yeah (laughs) and just my rage my husband the other day we were watching the movie to prepare you know and i was just going on this like huge tangent like rage just screaming out he's like why are you violating my ear holes stop it (laughs) save it for the podcast Okay. I know. I've never seen the movie before until last night. Same. I, I kind of was like refusing to, and then <laughs> and then y'all just pushed me in. You're Anyways, welcome. We'll save it. We'll save that on later. So. Yes. So Natalie, for those who have not listened, and for me, because I mean, we still don't know just a ton about each other. Tell the podcast a little bit about yourself. We want to know you, learn you, and that sounded really creepy. And I'm just gonna <laughs> stick with it. Okay, because we're the TMI queens. Is that, yes. is that how it goes? <laughs> Absolutely. It works. Too much too much awkwardness, too much inappropriateness, too much historical facts in our head. It works on Actual all. Actual assault. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I'm an artist and a musician. I play drums, piano, percussion. Um, that was actually my first passion in life. I was a music major, and it just got too stressful, and I was like, fuck this. And I changed the graphic design. So when we get to Indiana Jones later, I know y'all would just like completely obliterate the historical stuff. So I looked at it more from a designer point. Love it. And, and I have, I have notes. And <laughs> cool. 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 Yeah. So, I mean, as we like go on through the episodes, you'll get to learn just like everyone that listens, learns more about me and Keena as we go on. They'll get to learn more about you too. Hopefully yeah. they'll find it interesting. Oh, I know they will. You better or else. I think the good thing is that Natalie has this wonderful, like, deadpan, like, dry humor. And I am, like, cackly and just awkward. But when we used to work together, everybody thought our voices were the same. So every time we'd answer (laughs) the phone, I would get, like, hey, Natalie. And I'm, like, totally not Natalie. And then she'd get Keena all the time. So hopefully you can differentiate between us because I don't see it. I don't hear it. I don't hear it, but, okay. Yeah. Weird libraries. Yeah, people yeah. are just weird. I know, right? I'm like, I am my own person. Yes. Oh, yeah, I wanted to say about last week's episode with some of those horror stories we talked about Layman. People, okay, for one thing, those stories happened years ago. Just <laughs> yes. so, like, if you are in Little Rock, please do go to that library. Like, those stories, those stories happened, like, three, over three years ago. Yes. Because that's when I stopped working there. And Keena was just a little bit after that, so... Oh, yeah. All my really good stories are from, like, 2011 when there was a lot of a lot of stuff going down. By the time yep. I quit in, like, 2000, whatever, 17, 18, 19, I don't know, wherever. It, it was way better. There was actually, like, it was lovely. It wasn't yeah. scary. And we, don't, <laughs> we don't talk about, like, weird shit that happened at Layman in a hateful way. Like, we're just reminiscing about what we yes. endured. But it wasn't, like, oh, we hated every minute. Like, we loved our jobs there, and we loved everybody that we worked with, so... Yeah. yeah, go to a librarian conference. Everybody's got those stories because you're Real working fuck. with the public, and the public is literally the worst. Yes, <laughs> For, like, they public are. Is Sorry, public. Crazy. Yeah. So, Kina, how was your week? 
Oh, my week was really good. So my husband is building a race car. I think I've mentioned that. And he's probably ran through here screaming boost his life at some point. But uh, we've been traveling all over Texas buying, like, parts for it. So he's getting, like, discounted (laughs) parts. Because literally, like, right now the car is just a frame. There's nothing in it. So we went to Mexico, (laughs) the border, to pick up a er, transmission. I don't know. I don't know cars. Yeah, transmission. I thought it was like an air or something. I don't know. (laughs) And I got to see the world's largest killer bee, which is a statue. So I took a picture by it, because why wouldn't you? And then we went to Dallas to pick up something out. Oh, a cage. Because I guess when you're racing, you have to have a metal cage so you don't crush like a tin can, which I appreciate, because I have anxiety. So, And then while we're there, we just I went to all the Bonnie and Clyde sites. So I hunted down their grave sites, and then Clyde's childhood home, which... Had like crypt tags all over it. Nice. <laughs> really scary. And like the back door was open a little bit. And I was like, ooh, maybe I could peek inside. And then I thought for a second, I'm like, it's tagged by a crypt. It's in the projects. It's probably got somebody inside squatting. So then I scurried away. But nice, uh, Bonnie's grave, yeah, her grave had like makeup on it and like perfume. So if, again, if you join Patreon, our last drunk dive was on Highwaymen and we talked a lot about Bonnie and Clyde. So it was really cool to see the stuff we talked about. And then I went to Medieval Times and we got the VIP royalty package. So I'm so jealous. Felt Ooh. like a, felt like a queen. And then You're a queen. We went and, so one of my really good friends <laughs> and her fiance, I'm actually gonna marry them. I'm getting ordained like this week so I can marry them. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we took them and we did the little royal announcement, like, congratulations on your engagement. And Aww. they didn't know we were doing it. So they hear, like, Lady Brienne. And she's like, oh. And then they, well, Lord Luciano. And the second it dawned on him, he jumped up and had his arms up like he was just <laughs> accepting the love of the crowd and, like, did some <laughs> bows and stuff. It was the most magical thing I've ever seen. He was so happy. <laughs> that is amazing. Also, if they want um, a live podcast episode to be done at their wedding, I mean, we know some people. Right? Well, he also told me, he's like, okay, so when Tom Hanks interrupts weddings, he's always talking about how wonderful the bride is. And then he's like, she could do better. He's like, that's all I'm asking. You have to do that. And I'm like, okay, just tell your mom that I'm not a dick. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, warn the few people that it might matter most to. Just just throw that out there a little bit. Right. Yeah. So so if anybody else does weddings and you're ordained, want to throw me some tips on how to be awesome, you can email me. That'd be awesome. But yeah, I'm really excited. Confetti. Confetti. (laughs) Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Make it rain. Just, yes. Just throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, and you're married. And, and then there you go. <laughs> well, I have, like, no understanding of weddings because I courthoused it up. So there's just, it's very complicated. All right. Yes, it is. And then yesterday we went to the downtown Dallas and I saw all the the grassy knoll and the building where Lee Harvey, Ar- Lee Harvey Oswald was and shot. <laughs> And I was like, one of those things, like, it's such a tragic part of history, and it was really interesting. So, my little nerd heart was really excited this week. So Nice. That's awesome. Hey. So, how was your week, Ashley? Ah, my week was a week. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I had a really rough mental health week. Today's the first day that I'm starting to feel like myself again. But, otherwise, it's fine. We went and house hunted. I will officially be moving to Louisiana in, I think, two weeks. To start my new job, and that's why we'll be the tri-state TMI, because we'll be spanning Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas. Taking over the world. <laughs> yes, August is are... just expanding. <laughs> yes, go south. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we went and looked at houses and fell in love with a couple. I'm just really excited to, like, get it started. But I also need to, like, super clean my house and get rid of almost everything we own. I'm tempted to just sell the house as is and then buy new stuff when we get down there, but we'll see. But yeah, otherwise, I'm here. Yay! I've been drinking for an hour already, so it's uh, it's going to be a shit show, guys. Just strap in. Anyway. Right. How was your week, Natalie? Yay. I mean, it's just been a crazy week. I taught an art class yesterday, and I, I just, I'm on my feet. My, my feet hurt so bad right now. Because um, all day I, I shelve and pull holds or I'm working the circulation desk. And then in the afternoon I go and assist with art classes or teach and everything. And and on Monday it was off-site. So we had to go to the 4-H center 
So that's like loading the car with all the canvases and stuff, and then unloading, and it was pouring rain. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> I know. Lately, it's either hot as hell or it's a hurricane. It's it's been kind of like one or the other. Very nice. What's rain but like? Even so, um, the classes turned out really great. Though Good. the kids had a lot of fun. It was actually like team mm-hmm. class. Um, yeah. It was neat. And oh, it was very inspirational. It was a reach for your stars class. So it was like a night. <gasps> A nice high painting Ooh. with like a little hand reaching up. Oh, that is so cool. It was cute. Real talk, painting is my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> I love painting and I love welding too. I have a blowtorch. It's a lot what? of fun. What? I want to mm-hmm. weld? Oh man, if you hear noises, it's Zeke's welding in there right now. He's like, I'm going to be as loud as I possibly can be while you're recording. It's like, Good. thanks. So we'll just think your house is haunted. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Well, even one kid on Monday, so we use blow dryer. So, like, you know, you paint your background with acrylic paint, and then you can use a blow dryer to get get it solid, and then you just paint on top of that so it doesn't mix too much or anything. And one kid's, like, like holding it super far away. Like, the blow dryer was, like, two <laughs> feet away from the canvas. I'm like, you can turn it on hot, and we can bring that in real close, like an inch. They're like, are you sure it's not going to catch on fire? I'm like, yeah, I use my blowtorch on it. You're fine. And they just like blew their little minds. Like a blowtorch? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It can handle it. All right, let's go. This is why I can't work with kids because if a kid was like, I'm afraid it'll catch on fire, I'll be like, you know what? That's the best part. <laughs> I am such a fire bug. I have to admit. I almost like, yes, please, but it's okay. I need to learn how to weld. That would be fun. Me too. And we'll add it to our to do list. I made a giant cat once. It was like, a, it's a giant metal wire cat. It is about. <laughs> that yes uh, it was, i just think it was the three... having fire yeah <laughs> it was uh <laughs> the cat was three feet long and two feet tall it was huge oh. and just looked really cool yeah he's like welding a car right now but i think when he's done like, with that, teach me <laughs> right yes <laughs> far he's I... gonna like, drive whatever big deal i want to make there's, a cat there's a store here that has a please giant don't do that after this again. podcast <laughs> <laughs> Get real swasty and then go do that. I'm sorry, Ashley. What did you say? No, you're fine. There is a uh, a store here in town that has a giant metal chicken, like taller than me metal chicken. And as soon as I get paid, I'm going to send my husband there to buy it so I can have a chicken <laughs> in my new house because I love it so much. There's also like a little mini chickadee, but I want the giant chicken. You're gonna be in Louisiana. <laughs> Shouldn't you have like a gator or something? I can do that too. I'll learn to weld and make my own gator. I love yeah. those tire gators, too. Like, they take <gasps> old tires. Yeah. Those look pretty cool. Have them in your yard, like, halfway, so it looks like they're swimming in your yard, your grass. Yes. I am 100% going to be that bitch. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gator bitch. It. I love yeah. it. <laughs> tire gators. Speaking of things that rhyme with bitch, today's theme is witches and pagans. Woohoo! Ooh. Yes. <laughs> I love that segue. That was the best segue. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I, I, there's so much to choose from, so we're gonna have to do this again. Oh, we absolutely will. I'm excited. So who wants to go first? Who wants oh. to go first? Well, with you bouncing in your seat, why don't you go first, Tina? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm always enthusiastic. Okay, so I had funny today, and Yay. I didn't want to like make fun of pagan religions because I'm not that bitch. I don't want to do that. So. I made a compromise, and I'm going to make fun of Nicolas Cage instead. Fuck yes. Oh. <laughs> I, like, love and hate Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I like, love and love Nicolas Cage so much. <laughs> like, Raising Arizona is one of my favorite movies of all time. <gasps> yes! Oh, my God. There is a podcast out there. It's called Cage's Kiss, and it's just about Nicolas Cage. <laughs> what? <laughs> How am I just now finding out about this? Um, some of my coworkers and I, we would like hide little pictures of Nicolas Cage's in our desks and stuff. So like, you'd be like, why is my mouse not working? And you turn it up and over the sensor, it's a little like freakish face of Nicolas Cage. And (laughs) now that I work at a different library, one of my old coworkers had a hold reservation. So I pulled the DVD and I'm like, oh, this is for her. So I put a Nicolas Cage in (laughs) in the case and I sent it in the delivery and it was she was so mad <laughs> and like a funny mad but she like went to Emory and all the other people of that library and was like did you do this and like she's freaking out <laughs> and they were all like no we had no idea that's <laughs> and I'm like, 
I hope you left all the big loose cages when you left that job too. So it's just my come oh, sit. Oh yeah, no, they're still here. floating around. Good. And we we did Braveheart with Mel Gibson. Yes. Uh, Rainbow ponies. It was really eclectic taste. Nice. Arctic weasels. Anyway, so Nicholas Cage, let's go. Boom. Please tell right. me it's about the witch's apprentice. No. <gasps> We're talk about the wicker man. Oh, Whoa. bees. I guess bees. A- yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which, admittedly, I know there's been several movies on this, and I know of it because I think I think I knew like Caesar talked about it, but I never actually knew like the actual history behind it, and I was kind of surprised. So, the Wicker Man is a large wicker statue that was reportedly used to, you know, sacrifice humans by burning them in this effigy and it was mostly used by druids which is like priest of celtic paganism so the knowledge of this phenomenon comes largely from two sources one is caesar which fuck that guy for letting the library of alexandria get burned real talk that's a whole nother story listen to last week and then the other guy is a greek geographer named strabo which what a name all right but it seems that both of them got all their information from one dude who was Poseidonus, and his actual account didn't survive. So one dude wrote about it. Two that guys like plagiarized him, but the original doesn't exist. So that that whole thing, that story is old as time. <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> so I am sweating. Jesus. Okay, I can't have the fan on because it's too loud. You made me laugh too hard. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. (laughs) Most information on the Wicker Man comes from Julius Caesar, who states that the Druids burned criminals and prisoners of war in wicker structures, and that when such were unavailable, they would even go so low as to inflict punishment on the innocent. The Wicker Man ritual was described by Julius Caesar specifically in Book 6 of the Gaelic War, where he says, and I quote, (laughs) The whole Gaelic race is addicted to religious ritual. Consequently, those suffering from serious maladies or subject to the perils of battle are sacrificed as human victims. Some weave huge figures of wicker and fill their limbs with humans, who are then burned to death when figures are set on fire. They suppose that the gods prefer this execution to be applied to thieves, robbers, and other malefactors taken in the act, but in default... They will resort to the execution of the innocent. Did you hear the welding in the background? <laughs> I thought it was uh, police sirens at first. I was like, okay, we're just, we're just leaving that. That's fine. Oh, we're just going to pretend like you can't hear my husband welding. Okay. <laughs> Caesar's use of like emotive language. Like he really tried to drill in this point. Like they even go so low. Hence that he was intending to show the enemies of Rome in a particular barbaric light. Which, you know, propaganda. Also a tale as old as time. In any case, Caesar himself did not witness these rituals. Instead, he cited the Greek traveler Poseidonus that we talked about, who had visited Gaul, which is modern-day France, about 50 years earlier and written of the human sacrifice there. Why Poseidonus, a Roman sympathizer, wrote and why he wrote it is still unclear. He may have had first experienced the sacrificial rite and decided to write it down, or he may have been transmitting rumors or outright lies subsequently copied by other classical authors. So nobody knows if he actually saw it or if he was just like, I heard this thing, I'm going to write it down and say it happened. Nice. Sounds legit. Yeah. Also, history. (laughs) (laughs) Basically TMZ. Yeah, you got to weed through all that TMZ shit. Yes. God, my knees are sweating. (laughs) (laughs) Um, besides Caesar and Strabo, another source, Floris, also mentions the practice of human sacrifice by burning, this time among the Balkan Celts, stating that during the campaigns by the Scordisci at the beginning of the first century BCE, Roman prisoners were burnt alive. And here's a quote from that one. Throughout their advance, they left no cruelty untried as they vented their fury on their prisoners. They sacrificed to their gods with human blood. They drank out of human skulls. By every kind of insult inflicted by burning and fumigation, they made death more foul. They even forced infants from their mother's wombs by torture. Yikes. Yes. Unhealthy. Mm, That one's a bit. Was the skull cleaned? 
I don't know. I don't think they had dishwashers. And you wonder why that's the only way to wash dishes. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, like for the sanitation factor, because yeah, you can yeah. hit the sandy rinse on mine at least. Yeah. I mean, these are probably the people that also thought water was poison and you should drink beer, you know? Yeah. Well, because it kind of was. I mean, it's so polluted. <laughs> Real talk. Because they should in it. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Alcohol. So, did the wicker man drink. really <laughs> drink? Slurp. So, did the Wicker Man really exist, or is it simply another urban legend, a product of classical imagination designed to reinforce the images of savages in the popular psyche and illustrate the necessity that they must be civilized? All accounts of the Wicker Man and human sacrifice by burning are hearsay, and no eyewitnesses' accounts have survived. Furthermore, very few archaeological evidence has been discovered of the phenomenon, and it logically raises uh, the doubts about the veracity of these plant vera- veracity veracity of these claims. So this person named Namu Brown, who is an author that specializes in druids, made a really good point. Wicker is basically another way of saying basket. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say this is a quote. Now, <laughs> now. Baskets are quite strong, but once you set them on fire, they spring apart or can be kicked apart. The structural integrity of a figure made out of wicker does not last long when it's on fire, and the raw materials and the space inside ratio is relevant. There's not a lot of room for smoke to contend with. Now imagine a live animal in a wicker basket which is on fire. Think about the inevitable struggle to escape. Based on experience, there's no way you could burn a live animal to death in a wicker man, let alone a human. Huh. I never thought of that. <laughs> I hadn't either. Like, it doesn't take a, like, you have to have a lot of heat to burn a human. Yeah, I'm assuming, like, if you could. Well, like, somebody... well I watch, I watch a lot of Criminal Minds, and I remember watching a documentary <laughs> <laughs> that, like, actually broke down, like, how to burn a human body, and it, like, it takes a long time and a lot of heat, a lot of fire. Yeah, because yeah. most people actually die from smoke inhalation and not burning. So yeah. I guess that makes sense. Well, in a crematorium, you still have will find bones in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't completely disintegrate. Yeah, yeah. And I think they burn yeah. at like 6,000 degrees, maybe. Don't quote me on that. Well, I have no idea. <laughs> but give it a Google if you're curious. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this person just saying that because of the space and what they described the Wicker Man, they're the smoke wouldn't be getting in there, so they wouldn't right. die of smoke inhalation, and then they'd be able to karate chop their way out, so. That's how I'm gonna save myself. I'm just gonna karate chop myself karate. out of the situation. Cheeto Cheeto chop. Yes. <laughs> Cheeto chop. Yes. <laughs> so, now that I've convinced you that this isn't real, I'm gonna flip it. Uh, what? What? There is one further source of information produced by the Celts themselves, which may support the horrific accounts of these authors. During the 1st century BCE, the Celtic tribes in Thrace produced a large number of silver tetra... Oh, God, I meant to Google this. Tetra drachms of the Thaso type, which is like a coin, on which a mysterious figure appears on the reverse. Various versions of these Celtic coins depict a colossus with a burning head or the head portrayed as a wheel. Both apparently reference the thunder god Tyrannus, to whom sacrifice was made by fire, and who was associated with the solar wheel. I'm going to send you a picture uh, now. Can you see it? It looks like Squidward. It does look like Squidward, but the <laughs> idea is like that head looks like it's on fire, and then the uh, limbs look like the Burning Man, like the image of the Wicker Man we've all seen. Oh, so, I was going to ask if it was kind of like related to Burning Man, that weird hippy dippy festival that they have <laughs> in the desert every year. We're going to get to it. Score. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's like they keep on saying, oh, this can't happen. And then they found this coin and they're like, well, fuck, this definitely <laughs> looks like a wicker man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So while the schematic nature of these images makes certainty impossible, this coinage corresponds geographically and chronologically with the accounts of human sacrifice by burnings among the Baltic Celts. And it appears likely that the images may be the only direct archaeological evidence of the gruesome phenomenon that has become known as the Wicker Man. So whether or not this is real, it has had quite the impact on pop culture and the arts. For example, in 1973, The Wicker Man, starring Christopher Lee a la Superman, 
Edward Woodard, which I, I don't know who that is, and Britt Eklund, which I also don't know who that is. Uh, Woodward plays a cop who travels to a remote Scottish island to investigate a disappearance and winds up entangled in a pagan carrions on that culminates in, well, as you could probably guess, getting burned alive in a worker man. Beautiful. Yeah. I love the excitement you had when you said burned alive. He's burned alive! <laughs> burned alive! <laughs> And it became a cult classic. At the genteel end of the spectrum are the modern pagans who reenact Wicker Man burnings as a purgative ritual. No humans are actually burnt inside them. It's just you make yourself a little Wicker Man and catch it on fire to get rid of your bad vibes. Huh. So, I mean, no one gets hurt unless you burn yourself with like, the little Zippo lighter. But as we establish, people can be like dumbasses. So I just wonder like how many times folks have actually burn themselves. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Far more interesting is the annual Burning Man Festival. It's a bizarre combination of art and booze that is held the week before Labor Day in the Nevada desert. No direct line can be drawn between the Gaelic Wicker Man and the Burning Man Festival, which it capped his attendance this year or last year. It hasn't what? happened yet. At 100,000 people. Jesus Christ. Wow. That's a lot of freaking people to be in the desert. Like, woo, burn it. Uh, it was so hot. Yeah. No. If I was younger, I'd probably want to go. But right now, I'm just like, nope. he, no. <laughs> he has never been my friend. Like, I, I, I was six year old. I was, even as a six year old, like, I, I instantly get a sweat stash. <laughs> like, like, like he has just never been my friend or like and I was in softball and basketball like man I take the helmet off in softball my face be a cherry tomato okay yep. like it's just he is not my friend well the good news is at Burning Man you typically don't have to wear clothing so you won't That's overheat that way yeah no I'll just go to the like Colorado or something <laughs> I'm just gonna stay home in my air conditioned my yeah. air conditioning so <laughs> This late summer event is an experiment in community and art influenced by 10 main principles. And this came from their website, so it's kind of cheesy. It says, radical inclusion, radical self-reliance, radical self-expression, communal effort, civic responsibility, gifting, participation, immediacy, and leave no trace. I don't get any of that from the clips I've seen of Burning Man. <laughs> Nope. I, I see booze, I see drugs, I see naked people, and people being, you know, uh, culturally uh, insensitive by ripping off. Yeah. <laughs> I just Cultural love like, all the, I love all the radicalness. Like, is there radical right? participation? I don't know. I just want to put radical in front of everything you said. <laughs> There's also yeah. an alarming amount of animal skins being worn for the desert. Gross. True. Yes. Very true. And the event takes its name from its culmination, the symbolic ritual of burning a large wooden effigy that they call the man. The man. The man. And that actually happens on the Saturday evening of the event. So, this part cracked me up. The festival, which many sources claim, began when one of the founders torched an effigy in the San Francisco beach in 1986 to purge himself of negative vibes after he broke up with his girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a bad breakup. That right. is. Bad breakup. I'm going to burn everything. <laughs> Real Rage. talk. Been there. Big mood. <laughs> Fun fact. So my when we got married the day before we eloped, we just had a giant bonfire and we burned everything from like every ex we ever had. So it was, nice. it was very fun. That's, that's actually kind of nice. That's all right. Yeah. It was very freeing. So, Deer decided that this should be an annual thing and started inviting people to participate every year. But he celebrate my ex. Yeah. Yeah. Like, burn your bad vibes, dude. This is like 86. Like, where's the hippie thing coming from? I'm just. He, maybe he couldn't let go. Like, he yeah. Go the hippie well, days. I mean, it, you said it was San Francisco. So. <laughs> True. <laughs> Well, in the 80s, that makes me just think of, like, teen angst. You know, like, oh, true. You know, fuck the man, fuck yeah. your ex-girlfriend, any of your authorities. Let's put on some leather and then get naked again, apparently. <laughs> that I'm not comfortable with. Sounds <laughs> like a Saturday to me. 
God, I really hope he had the <laughs> big 80s hair and, like, the really yes. loud outfit while he was doing this, too. Oh, yeah. we dress like kids. <laughs> I mean, I was, like, a baby in the 80s, but it was still a wild time. I've seen pictures of my family, so. <laughs> what is that? The higher the hair, closer to God? <laughs> Hell yeah. Man, oh. that still is true to date in some of the South. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> All right, so he actually claimed... That this event isn't related to the Wicker Man because he never saw the movie (laughs) or read a book, apparently. But let's compare the two, okay? So we got flaming destruction of a giant wooden man, check. A frightening pagan ritual, probably check. You don't know what they're doing. Could be worshiping some god. Torching of the innocent, check, because they probably got severe sunburn. So that's still torching them. Yep. And uh, also the dehydration, so the torture of the heat stroke and the passing out and whatever. So it seems legit to me they're the same. So Saying legit. that now. Yes. So now for the funny. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm hoping that nobody has seen The Wicker Man. So these quotes are going to be taken out of a complete wild context because it makes it funny. I have never seen the movie. Never seen I it. I have never seen it. So yes! here you go. Okay. All I know is some of the references, like the bees. That's about it. I don't okay. even know that. <laughs> I'm going to set the scene. Okay? A okay. bee helmet has been placed on his head. Nicholas Cage's head. No! And bees are being poured inside it. Yikes. Rude. And he says, oh no! Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Oh, they're <laughs> in my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! That's the quote. Yikes. But it's like... Half pain, half orgasm. <laughs> yes. I'm just reading as I see it. I haven't seen you it. You have to do it like in the Nicolas Cage voice, though. I don't know if I can. <sighs> okay, the next one. So, Nicolas Cage, he's oh. holding a doll that belongs to this main character, little girl or whatever. And oh, he says... Her doll? No, <laughs> just oh. a doll. Okay, okay. fine. <laughs> says, is this hers? How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? How did it get burned? <laughs> <laughs> if you look to my notes it just gets more like capitalized each time to express right. the importance of those words okay. <laughs> and then sister willow says i don't know beautiful so dramatic okay this dramatic reading is everything it's from the theater <laughs> the theater <laughs> setting the scenes he's about to get his legs broken This is murder! Murder! You'll all be guilty and you're doing it for nothing! Killing me won't bring your goddamn honey back! Okay. I think I need to watch this. Yes. Yes. Okay, Winnie the Pooh. Okay, Nicolas Cage. Bitches! You bitches! That's it. Same. This is like wicker thug life. Yeah, thug life. (laughs) Ah, Bitches and hoes, man. Bitches and hoes and bees. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so he sees some woman holding a bloody bag in Nicolas Cage. What does he say? What's in the bag? A shark or something? Is that a shark in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Where does sh- how do we go from bees to sharks? Yeah. I'm so confused. <laughs> this is Shark Week, so that's Nicolas a very appropriate Cage, time. baby. You don't know what's going to happen. It's a wild yeah. ride. That is true. <laughs> it just made me think of seven. What's in the box? What's in the box? Yes. I had to explain to my dad the other day what that meant. Because Terry and I were like screaming it at one of the houses we looked at, and my dad was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Oh yeah, it's from Seven. It's fine. I love that movie. It's so great too. Okay, so Nicholas Cage, you little liars. Rowan Woodward is your classmate, isn't she? Isn't she? That's her desk, and you're the biggest liar of them all. I'm warning you. You tell me another, and I'll rescue myself. That's a promise, Miss. And then she says, Rose, Sister Rose. He said, of course, another goddamn plant, Rose. They all have flower names. Yikes. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I'm seeing a theme. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Colts. Yay. Okay. Village Sister says, you wait a minute. Do you have permission to charge in and disturb? So Nicholas Cage says, no, I don't need anybody's goddamn permission. I'm going to search every inch of this town. And anybody who interferes will be brought up in murder charges. You got that? You've got my permission to stay the fuck out of my way. I'm going to start saying that to people. <laughs> God, I need to watch this movie. Yes, I need to watch this because now I'm super intrigued. <laughs> okay, so Nicholas Cage holds up a police badge. 
And he says, I'm a policeman. You see my badge? That's it. That's quote. Okay. okay. <laughs> and the final one. <laughs> he says, are you a bar maiden? A barkeep? Or whatever you call it around here? And Sister Beach says, yeah, I'm Sister Beach. Yeah. And it's like, the, Sister Beach. <laughs> the writing sounds astounding. Ta- it's like chef's cl- chef kiss yeah. over here Mwah. this makes me want to like like so you know jimmy fallon does those kid theater things yes. Yes. like i want that with this script right now oh my yes. god oh yeah it's beautiful i don't know who wrote that movie but high five real talk we'll clap there you go. <laughs> yeah oh I, just <laughs> I got my drink in the condensation so when i clapped it flashed my nice. face refreshing refreshing Jinx. <laughs> There's only a few Nicolas Cage movies I can take seriously. <laughs> but they're just so hilarious. Oh, I just love him. He's a national treasure. Oh! oh. I didn't even mean to say that. <laughs> also a good movie. Yes. It is. I, that's, one, that's another one of my favorites of his. Still the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and as terrible as this, as this one is, I like Face Off. Too. Oh my god, I love you face too. off! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Just Christ. Nicolas Cage being Travolta. Can you get a better movie? I I... Look, if this became a Nicolas Cage appreciation podcast, <laughs> I'm here for it. He's <laughs> amazing. I just, I, I just can't. Oh. We need, we need another National Treasure stat. Get on that yes. right now. Oh, all right. So, who wants to go next? I can go. Okay. Okay, so I have a question first. Have you ladies watched The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix? Yes. Uh, Yes. Okay. So good. I love it. So, I adore that show, and I really want to read the comics. Uh, I just keep putting it off. Their work is so great. So amazing. And then the show is just like so interesting. And I really love how dark it is. And there was something in there that really fascinated me. And in doing this week's topic of witches and paganism, I decided to go paganism instead of witches, even though I'm mentioning a show about witches. (laughs) So there was one thing in the show. I mean, there's tons of things that fascinate me, but there was one thing that really stood out when I started researching paganism. And that is Lupercalia, which is a pagan holiday or a festival, not holiday. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And it's, I know, it took me a while to even reading up on it, but it's found to be synonymous with like Valentine's Day. And I'll get a little bit into why it kind of is, but historically, it's not really about Valentine's Day. So. Lupercalia was an ancient pagan festival held each year in Rome on February 15th. Although Valentine's Day shares its name with the martyred Christian saint, some historians believe that the holiday is actually an offshoot of Lupercalia, like I was saying. Mm-hmm. So in the show, you know, it the guys and girls are paired off and they go running through the woods in their underwear and blah, blah, blah. And it's just it's just real weird. And I fully expected it not to be, like, super accurate because it's a Netflix show, but whatever. Um, (laughs) But some of the things that they touched on are in line with what I found out. Oh, cool. Let's uh, march it on back. And (laughs) so let's start with Romulus and Remus. You know. yeah. The twins. So no one knows the exact origin of Lupercalia, but it's been traced back as far as the 6th century BCE. According to Roman legend, the ancient king Amulius ordered Romulus and Remus, his twin nephews and founders of Rome, to be thrown into the Tiber River to drown in retribution for their mother's broken vow of celibacy. Oh, how dare she. That hoe. They'll take your kids and send them (laughs) down a river. That sounds so harsh. (laughs) So a servant, like, felt bad about this and didn't want this to happen. So instead of just tossing them in the river, she put them in a basket and then let the river god carry the basket and the bro- brothers downriver to a wild fig tree where it became caught in the branches. And then this is where a she-wolf rescued the twins and she took them into their den and suckled them per the legend and all of that at the base of the Palatine Hill where Rome was founded. Oh yeah, that's that famous statue where it has the she-wolf and they're suckling at the teat. 
Yes, like that's that's the the legend is that Romulus and Remus were raised by wolves and then founded Rome, et cetera, et cetera. So here is okay. I didn't say my topic is morbid this week, and <laughs> sorry. And I am still going morbid light because I'm still emotionally scarred from out morbiding, morbiding. Yes, <laughs> being more morbid than Kina's morbid story. So I'm still going morbid light. Here's why I picked it for morbid though. Ooh. So Lupercalia rit- rituals took place in a few places. The Lupercal Cave on Palatine Hill and within the Roman open air public meeting place called the Comitium. The festival began at Lupercal wi- um, Cave with the sacrifice of one or more male goats, a representation of sexuality, and a dog. Oh, no, not a puppy. A dog. Real oh. sad. So the sacrifices were performed by the Luperci, a group of Roman priests. Afterwards, the foreheads of two naked Luperci, typically youths, were smeared with the animal's blood using the sacrificial knife. No. What's real weird is that the two or three people, two or three men that were smeared with the blood had to be laughing while they did so. Ugh. Which I... <laughs> Just like, just take a moment to picture someone who's probably just in a loincloth, laughing hysterically and maniacally while they're being smeared with blood from a goat and dog sacrifice, and that it's like they're being smeared with a knife. No, I don't just, like that. Just picture it. I so that's. I would just want a shower. <laughs> and then after they uh, this was done, the blood was removed with a piece of wool that was soaked in milk. Oh no! Which is just real gross. To me. I don't know why that like grosses me so much. Well, there's also no refrigeration, so it's probably like sour, gross, hot milk oh, on top of your God. gross blood mixture. Uh, yeah, I was it's think, like Kina's. Oh no! Just made me think of, like Luigi. Like oh, like <laughs> yes. that is 100 percent how I feel. But yes, yeah, so uh, feasting began after the ritual sacrifice. I, like, legitimately just Googled the bloodiest pagan holiday to find something. And this is what came up. So, <laughs> after the feast was over, the Luperci cut strips, called thongs or febra, <laughs> of goat hide for the newly, from the newly fa- sacrificed goats. And then they ran naked or nearly naked around Palatine, Palatine whipping any women within striking distance with the thongs. Okay. No. Real sure. talk. So it says that many women welcomed the lashes and even like bared their skin to be lashed because it was for them to receive fertility consecration. But has a towel and he does that flick thing. I mean, it just incites rage. (laughs) You don't want to see me go to jail? Let my husband flick me with a wet towel. (laughs) Oh God, I can't, I couldn't do it. So yeah, these women uh, like supposedly let themselves be whipped by this rawhide because it, it would make them fertile for the coming year. Yeah, high five for science that we know we don't have to do this bullshit for fertility now. Real talk. Go to the doctor. I know, this is so fucked up. Yes. This is fucked up. Yeah, honestly, fertility treatments are, like, barbaric and painful and horrible for women even now. Like, Well, that's, like, side note. At least you're not getting whipped. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Historical detour. So when I went to Ireland in high school, one of the castles we went to, there was a stone that... uh, I can't remember which castle it was, but suppose it was worn really smooth because supposedly touching the stone made you fertile. So women who were having trouble conceiving would come from all around just to rub the stone. And I was on that trip with my boyfriend in our class and everyone shoved me towards the stone and was like, rub it, even though I was in fucking high school. So things like this where they like push for women to be fertile by touching a stone or being whipped by raw goat skin and stuff like it just really irks me but whatever tradition it's our only purpose for breeders <laughs> yes you know cattle and all that okay continue <laughs> okay so um in sabrina the chilling adventures when they do the lupercalia episode the men and women are paired off by doing a maypole dance mm-hmm. and i was wondering how like close that was to what actually happened so during lupercalia the men randomly chose a woman's name from a jar to be coupled with for the duration of the festival. But often the couples would stay together until the following year's festival. And more often than not, the couples would actually fall in love and get married. 
Oh, wow. Oh. I mean, that's good. It's like uh, slightly less slutty than what the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very true. Does that like is a very good point. Dating? Speed dating pagan style. <laughs> you know what? I'm not mad at it. Of all, like, kind of, like, shitty traditions, you know, being whipped or, I don't know, or just selling them off, trading for goats, you know, stuff like that. That is probably, like, my least concern of getting married in that sense. True. True. Yeah. It seems, people say a lot about pagans, but that doesn't seem so bad. Yes. Well, and here's what could be worse. I don't could love about this is that eventually um, the nakedness part of Lupercalia lost popularity. So they started doing the, fe- they still did the festival, but it became more chaste and women were whipped on their hands by fully clothed <gasps> men. No, uh, that makes my hands hurt so bad. Just thinking about it. What is this? What, like every other story I've done, it's the bottoms of your feet. And now it's your hands. <sighs> yes. Those are like the two things that I can't handle. Like when we watch Handmaid's Tale and they whip the bottom of people's feet, I like almost pee my pants because it just grosses. <laughs> it like horrifies me. Oh, God. Your hands, like how could you use them or anything? Like you're useless. That's the point. Uh, like you can't yeah. and that's the punishment. Besides, so the Yeah. So I found this one story about Lupercalia, which... I love and I had to share. And this is from a uh, mental floss of all places, but I fact checked <laughs> it. It sounds, it's pretty sound. So I'm just going to read it straight. Lubricalia is when Julius Caesar was offered the crown. It's like the dumbest shit ever. Let me just tell you. So today, <laughs> today Lubricalia is probably most famous for what happened on February 15th, 44 BCE. That day, a naked, perfumed, drunk Mark Antony was one of the runners. <laughs> While Julius Caesar watched the proceedings from a throne, Antony went up to Julius Caesar with a diadem. And for those who don't watch or read Harry Potter, that is a crown or a type of headband. Um, And in what later historians have said was almost certainly scripted, attempted to give it to Caesar and proclaim him king. So the crowd's initial response to this action was tepid, to say the least. But when Caesar refused the crown, they cheered. Antony tried again and Caesar refused again. And the crowd exploded. Caesar ordered the crown taken to the Temple of Jupiter because Jupiter was Rome's one king. The purpose of this exercise has been debated, and some propose Antony did it on his own to either flatter Caesar or embarrass him. While at the time, it was thought that Caesar orchestrated the stunt as a way to test the waters for whether the people would accept him as king. Either way, and this is a direct quote, either way, it didn't really work out for Caesar. He was assassinated one month later. Oh, wow. Yikes. Okay. So, so just because there's, like, people connect it to Valentine's Day, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about St. Valentine. Oh, cool. Uh, so there's several legends surrounding the life of St. Valentine. The most common is that on 1 February 14th, during the 3rd century AD, a man named Valentine was executed by the Roman Emperor Claudius II after being imprisoned for assisting persecuted Christians in secretly marrying Christian couples in love. But as the story goes, during Valentine's imprisonment, he tried converting Claudius to Christianity. Claudius became enraged and ordered Valentine to reject his faith or be killed. He refused to forsake his faith, so Valentine was beheaded. Legend also tells another story that happened during Valentine's imprisonment after he tutored a girl named Julia, the blind daughter of his jailer. The legend states God restored Julia's sight after she and Valentine prayed together. On the eve of his execution, Valentine supposedly penned a note to Julia and signed it, can you guess, from your Valentine. (laughs) Some historians believe that more than one man was unnamed Valentine was executed by Claudius II. So there's definitely some like ambiguity surrounding it and Valentine in his life. But the Catholic Church still declared him a saint and listed him in the Roman martyrology as being martyred on February 14th. Which is where we get oh. Valentine's Day. So kind of sad we celebrate love on his death day. Right. Like can it be his birthday? <laughs> That's I mean, I like fully ascribe to the fact that Valentine's Day was created by the card company. Oh yeah, absolutely. Isn't is. that, that how most things go though? We usually remember when people die and not when they were born. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Proof. But yeah, so thanks to St. Valentine's reputation as a patron for lovers. He became synonymous with romance. In the late 5th century AD, Pope Galatius I eliminated the pagan celebration of Lupercalia 
and declared that the February 14th was to be a day to celebrate the martyrdom of St. Valentine instead. Ooh. Although it's highly <laughs> unlikely he intended the day to commemorate love and passion. <laughs> of course. Sure, yeah, because the popes are all about that love and passion. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so... Some modern biblical scholars warn Christians not to celebrate Valentine's Day at all since it's thought to be based on pagan rituals. Oh, for shame. You better get rid of that Christmas, too. I was thinking to say, look at you, Christmas (laughs) and Easter. I almost did some Christmas stuff, and I'm like, i got to save it for Christmas. (laughs) I know. I'm not going to lie. Next week's topic is also a holiday, and it's one that I started to save, but I just had to. We'll do a whole holiday episode at some point. Yeah, I think it's funny because even like Easter, Christmas, Valentine's, every big holiday we celebrate as a Christian holiday is pagan. So I don't know if people are shocked. Exactly. So, you know, it's not really true that Lupercalia and Valentine's Day are mutually exclusive, but Valentine's Day has borrowed some of Lupercalia's symbolism. Like the color red, which represented a blood sacrifice during Lupercalia, and the color white, which signified... (laughs) The milk. Can you hear Reggie whining? No, I'm just thinking about like you paint everything okay. red for Valentine's Day, but like the original meaning it's is blood. blood. <laughs> yep. Like Sorry, all the kids. Reggie's, all those little like kids a, in kindergarten. <laughs> we're just seeing yeah. like a Dexter episode, and it's yeah for Valentine's. I, yes. Well, they like teach you that in kindergarten, don't they? Like red for it's red beautiful. hearts. And yes. Well, and like red roses are seen to represent like love and lust and all of that. So God help me if I have children. I'll be like, all right, we're gonna use red to symbolize the blood sacrifice of all the goats and the this <laughs> milk soaked wool on your forehead. It's fine. <laughs> Immersive history, kid. Stairs and I just can't wait. Us. I just can't wait till like kid goes to school and they're gonna think he's so normal. Yep. You gotta like when my child and it was like I was so weird. It was just like that's not historically accurate. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I have to sell, I have to share this with you. I actually got in trouble in Bible camp in like vacation Bible school for correcting the teacher when she was telling us about hell. <laughs> so yes. Anyway, but yeah, so white is signified the milk used to wipe the blood clean and represents new life and procreation. Like many ancient traditions, there's a lot of haziness surrounding the origins and rituals of Lupercalia. Lubricalia is no longer a mainstream public celebration for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> look, if I look out my front window and the neighbors are being whipped while naked, I'm I'm not going to think it's for a celebration. I honestly could see, like, you know, Burning Man Festival. Everybody runs around naked and does all that shit. Minus the whipping and, I don't know, yeah. maybe the milk. People swim in that. True. Could, we could do that. We could start <gasps> the next Burning Man. Like... 100,000 people went, and what are the tickets? Like, 50 bucks or more? Like, Hell yeah. Rich! Dude. Let's bring it back. You have a banana tree in your backyard. We could just, like, do it about that. <laughs> I, do. I do have a banana tree with no That's, banana. like, kind of sexual. <laughs> I don't know. What isn't sexual anymore? Real talk. <laughs> um, but... If you want it hard enough, it'll, it'll come. Apparently, <laughs> uh, some non-Christians still recognize... Lupercalia on February 14th and celebrate it in private. I don't like, we don't really celebrate Valentine's. Like, my husband always brings me flowers and I might make like a fancy dinner or something, but we don't really like do the go out for dinner and get dressed up and blah, 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 mostly because we're homebodies. But now I just want him to like come home and be like, babe, we're going to celebrate Lupercalia this year. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go run through the woods. <laughs> yes. But I don't want that fertile mess. No, you can keep that. Yeah. <laughs> keep that to yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we don't do val- we don't do holidays. We just do experiences. And now but, a race yeah. car. And now a race car. That's my experience. <laughs> I did with my ex because our anniversary ended up being on Valentine's. Yeah, well, that, that works out. Too. But even then, it was still really chill. We didn't exchange gifts because my birthday is in December along with Christmas, and then his birthday is in March. So we're like, well, f- fuck February. We'll just go to have a nice dinner. Now I'm with a guy who, like, fuck holidays. They're all just, like, corporations inspired. And I'm like, that's fine. Let's just watch a movie on Netflix. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I love that. I love that plan. But yeah, True. so that is Looper Kalia. Oh, I'm so glad mm-hmm. you did that. I did watch, you know, Sabrina. And I was like, I need to Google that because I didn't know. 
how I was I actually really was. impressed with the episode once I started reading about this because you know that episode is about not only Lupercalia but also Nick's uh, like familiar as a wolf and it's stalking them in the woods and then I was like mm-hmm. oh it's called Lupercalia because it has to do with wolves and you know the the Luper part of the the base word comes from the word for wolves so I was like really impressed with the the background info that they had on it Ooh, or maybe the wolf for the Rom- or romulus and remus mm-hmm. too there's mm-hmm. a lot of symbology there yeah and a lot what? that i read said that another story invo- involving romulus and Re- remus was that they actually were like attacked during a U- lupercalia when they were teenagers so it's a lot of the stuff I've read said that it ha- it started after Romulus and Remus were born, but because it says that as teens they were attacked during a Lupercalia, that mm-hmm. the ritual actually precedes them. Oh, okay. So, like, it's one of those things that there's a lot of supposition about, but it's still really cool, and I'm really fascinated by it. Yeah, a little side note. The Sabrina has the statue of Baphomet in the middle of their, oh, like, God. common room in, in yep. Arkansas. So it's against the law for, like, you know, a government place to say you can have a Christian icon, but you cannot have another one. So to make a point, yeah, so Arkansas put up the Ten Commandments and they were like, we're not going to let anybody else put anything up. So the church, the satanic temple or whatever was like, well, fuck you. That's not the law. We're going to bring in Baphomet and stick them right at the Capitol. (laughs) And you're like, you can't do that. And they're like, technically we can, because that's the law. And then they showed up with a giant statue and put it in Arkansas. And it was only there for a couple hours and then they hit it. So nobody would destroy it. But one dude, he was a preacher actually drove through the 10 commandments and that video is on YouTube and it's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Cause he's like, this is against the law. I'm a preacher, but you know, we could, it's just America. And then he just drives through it. Yep. I recommend. But it's yeah. Wonderful. So, so I guess the satanic temple is suing Sabrina for using that image because they say it's their temp or their statue. They did. And they reached a settlement and Netflix has paid the temple for the use of it so they don't have to remove it from previous mm-hmm. episodes and then in the show they've now destroyed it yeah yes. so that's how they got around it okay so what right. are you doing today natalie well okay so i was given weird and random which suits me perfectly since i'm quirky and have <laughs> add <Yeah>. um <laughs> and it's awesome that you mentioned wicca because that's the route i went oh good was the wiccans so let's talk about brooms yes <laughs> <laughs> that was my word word of the week brooms <laughs> all right so i did not realize how much goes into a broom for wiccans and witches i mean you hear the stereotypes so yeah i didn't realize that brooms are are what they're made for they're mainly for cleaning out negative energy and oh. they're called a besom besom something like that and they're always made from a branch which could be ash birch or willow and they can be small and decorative or huge and everything. And the goal is really to, like, clean your house. And then you kind of, like, whisk away the air to sweep out all that negative energy. Ooh, like Practical Magic when they have all exactly. the ash. Yeah! Oh. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, and they can use to be finished a circle, just like in Practical Magic. And same with, like, keeping the broom by the door helps to protect the negative energy and, like, keep it away Ooh. at your altar. One thing they say with modern witches is to never clean with that broom. Like, don't use it as cleaning. Like, it is its own huh. thing. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, if you clean with it, then you're kind of, like, ruining it pretty much. Uh, <laughs> I even love that I saw these on Etsy. Like, people make these and sell oh. them, too. <laughs> yes. My favorite time of the year is when you can buy the cinnamon brooms at, like, Kroger and Walmart. Ooh. That you can hang above the hearth or above your door to help, like, make your house smell really good and fall like and then also like to ward off spirits and stuff that's a helpful tip yeah. yes all hobby lobbies are already selling all the fall stuff and everything so oh, you i have know. to go <laughs> sponsor us hobby lobby there's no fucking way hobby lobby would sponsor us <laughs> <laughs> they are way too religious for us oh that's true we'll try michael's <laughs> yes we're coming for you michael's or joanne Ooh, yeah. okay, that works too <laughs> All right, so I found out a lot of weird Wiccan tidbits. I'm sorry, I'm such a, la- a, a list maker. I made a list last week, and you know what? We're going with lists. It's just cool. Lots of cool fun facts. Work. 
Okay. So what I thought was interesting as well was their type of heaven. When Wiccans die, they go to Summerland or Summerland. And there's all kinds of interpretations of how they want this. It can be like just a grassy field or just their own kind of version. And you can either be there with your loved ones, a guide of your spirit, or you can be reincarnated. I'm like, oh, that's kind of nice. I think that would be my heaven. Yeah, I want the like grassy field option. Mm. Unless there's bugs. You get to have your dogs. Yes. Is it a grassy field with your puppies? Because sure. I'll go for that one. <laughs> Just constantly playing fetch and like laying out having picnics. That could be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do I get rum? Rum, picnics, puppies. Maybe husband. If he's I almost being nice said the red red if he's good. He's his arm, he's. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I like that their marriage is hand fasting, uh, where it's just the con- the holding of hands and you wrap the ribbon around them. It's like a temporary trial, actually. It's only for one year and a day, which oh. I don't know why it's like that, a year and a day. Yeah, I had a friend who hand fasted, and then a year and a day from the day that they hand fasted, they actually got married. That's oh, cool. wow. Yeah. And I did a actual, like, literal knot tying ceremony in my wedding to have a little witchy nod. Oh, oh cool. I kind of wish everyone did that instead of, like, we've known each other two weeks, let's get married. And, like, I remember them doing this little hand thing and then seeing if they really are going to work out or not versus, like, let's just jump in this and then hate each other and have to get divorced. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Highly recommend. And, uh, and sometimes that works. You know, some, I know, I do know couples that they known each other three months and they got married and they're still married today. But statistically, though, statistically. let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> I lived in well. sin for like three years. So. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, oh, no. We're all thinner. Oh, we're okay. Thinner. Terrible. Terrible. People. That was my requirement. Had to live together before we got married. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, they worship naked. A lot of nakedness, nudeness, this episode I've noticed. It's um, true. <laughs> and it's really, it's actually not like an orgy out in the woods like you would think. It's really just to be one with your body and just to be comfortable with yourselves. And it's respecting one's boundaries, too. Uh, oh, I, I really appreciated that. Oh. On today's uh, episode of I Didn't Know I Wanted to Be a Wiccan. <laughs> I read an article, and that's where some of this comes from, is why would you want to convert to being a Wicca? So some of this is from that list. I did research to make sure it was correct. But there is more to it. But I'm like, all right, I kind of appreciate this a little bit more. And they always have a green thumb where they are very good at growing things. I would not be very good in that department. I kill almost every plant I touch. So. <laughs> Same. You know, I'm actually pretty good at that. The only thing I kill are roses. Roses oh. are hard. Yeah. My dad has a rose garden. It takes a lot of work. There's some symbolism to not being able to keep roses alive. I know. And th- what's weird is that's the only thing my mom can keep alive is roses. She kills everything huh. else. But I kill roses. I can mm. grow things. My last garden got a little out of control and I let them grow too much. And then they still tasted horrible. So I got to I gotta pull myself back a little bit. Maybe have too much of a green thumb. Yes. You get two so, green thumbs? Two. It's agreed. <laughs> We are we are all green witches or kitchen. I'm a kitchen witch. That's oh, my. I don't go-to. know the difference. Uh, oh, I need I'll to look at those things you pa- paste or paste paste on Facebook post. Yes, on Facebook. I share that shit all the time because I like not so secretly want to be a witch. <laughs> I didn't realize also how in modern day now, like there's insta witches, like there's a hood witch and like hood Wickham and all kinds of pretty well known. Insta celebrities too, so oh. if you're interested in that, give them a look up. Yep, I'm in um, a uh, witchy and occult and Wicca Facebook group. That's really fascinating. Cool. One of the weirdest ones that I found out, a little tidbit, was putting period blood in a lover's drink to help the relationship and for them not to stray. I'm not doing that. Okay, so I saw the trailer to that Midsummer, and I was like, I don't know if I want to see it. But then I read, like, a review on it, and apparently one of the people does that to the dude. Puts the menstrual Ooh. blood in the drink because the drink's, like, red. Like, oh, oh, my. So, yeah, so oh my if God. you're 
If your uh, boo is a hardcore Wiccan, you might want to check your drink, just in case. I would drink nothing but water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's just Kool-Aid. Uh. Uh, and there's other there's other um, recipes that have blood, urine, and semen just to make it bound oh. better. Yeah, I know that's like not great, nope. but at least that was like for a potion or something. But putting a period blood in like a person's drink unknowingly though that that one got me. That one like oh, okay, let's uh like he around. might leave you because of that. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, real real talk. <laughs> Yeah. Like, that might not keep him. He's going to go astray if we can do that kind of shit. <laughs> I mean, like, menstrual cycles are natural, and it's a part of being a woman, and it's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. It's not beautiful. It's also, fucking gross and awful. <laughs> also, nobody wants to even get that shit on them, let alone drink it. You're just like, ugh. No. And uh, podcast disclaimer, we are not shaming people who do do blood work for Wicca and all of that. It's just our personal preference. Yeah, I just don't want to drink it. If if you want yeah. to do it, you go for it. I'm just, I'm not gonna drink it. That's I, you. If you're using it I, for I whatever spell have, jars, that's fine. Yeah, I probably would actually want to have a conversation with that person, but I just don't want to yeah. drink it. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, there's no consent if you're doing it without them knowing too. Yes, yeah, so that's my issue. Always yeah. always ask for consent before you do some love potion. You know. Just, yes. Especially um, with lady fluids fluids well, fluids. <laughs> fluids in general okay yeah, yeah just anything yeah um my last little fun tidbit is may the fourth when you're may may the fourth what do you think may the may fourth, fourth be, with, be you. with you i knew it <laughs> um <Birds. laughs> which is awesome and also correct but there is another <laughs> celebration with may the fourth and that is fairies there is an idea where fairies actually can come and kidnap your children. What? Is a changeling thing? I thought that was trolls. I don't know. I've been watching a lot of Outlander lately, and for them, the fairies take your kid, put a changeling in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, That is not, it's not a changeling thing, though. It's more just kidnapping and taking. No, you don't even get a changeling. So when they say it is to wear things backwards and inside out like you do to confuse the fairies and to leave tea cake or bread outside and i know there's a myth that if you like pour salt or sugar in front of them they have to count every single grain Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so if you believe in fairies and are worried about your children your little ones on may the 4th those are some tidbits to help you protect them Oh, hell yeah. That'd be um, kind of fairy I am. Give me cake and I'll leave you alone. <laughs> real talk. Look, just if you want to give me cake, I'll leave you alone, even if I'm not a fairy. <laughs> yeah. Unless I'm asking for more cake. <laughs> I am obsessed with fairies. Like, I have all these fairy statues and it's just a thing I've always loved. Like, you know, there's horse girls and I was a dragon and fairy girl. Me too. So I still have all my fairy statues. They're in my kitchen. Aww. My yeah. sister is an artist, and she specializes in, like, fairies and, like, kind of more darker art, like, zombie pinups and stuff. So, uh, you check her out. She has EOS for artist on most things. But, yeah, her fairies are phenomenal, and she sells them at Comic-Cons, and I want all like of them. I need to commission. Yeah. <laughs> super good. I love fairies. I need to. I read um, books about the fa- fantasy world all the time. Mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings, fairies, all kinds of junk. Oh, yeah. It's sure. But yeah, that is the weird and the random of the Wicca. Or at least some of it. That's only the tip of the iceberg. There's so much. Awesome. It's hard to choose. Cool. That's really cool. I, I picked Broom for your random topic because I've mentioned that my undergrad was in psychology and I took physiological psychology. And the professor told us one time that women would put LSD on broomstick candles and shove them up their vaginas. What? And then that's where the imagery of the cackling witch came from. <laughs> it was like, oh, man. I am not thing. living my best life. It stuck with me to this day. It's been like a decade, and that's the only thing I remember from that class is the LSD broomsticks. I don't oh, think... That's horrifying. I don't think I needed <laughs> that in my life. <laughs> yeah. That is a thing that I now know. I know. I'm going to curse you all with my knowledge. Thank you. Welcome. welcome to hell. <laughs> I'm just 
just like out of everything I ever learned about psychology, that is number one that I did not forget. So, oh, I'm never Kudos gonna forget that. You, dude. <laughs> I'm never gonna look at a room the same way again. <laughs> yeah, well, because the membranes in the vagina can absorb things more like yeah. quickly. So, I know people do that with huh. tampons and alcohol and stuff that make them absorb it. Oh, kids these mm. days. <laughs> but that's how but you can get alcohol poisoning, so be careful. Sure. This is Yikes. like our butt chucking or p- butt chugging. Butt chugging <laughs> episode. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. You heard it here first, kids. Oh my god, don't do it. Please don't try don't do it. Please don't. Oh god. Yikes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that was part one, because we now do our themes over two weeks of witches and paganism and Wiccas. All right. Oh, yeah, so, so like we said at the beginning of this episode, we're about to film our drunk dive. So if you would like to listen to our drunk dives or get our book list, bucket list, bloopers, um, just extra stuff that we put on there that you're not going to get on the podcast, go to www.patreon.com slash historical AF pod. And you can actually go to the website and it will show you everything we've ever posted. You just can't actually see the content until you subscribe. Um, and it's anywhere from 2 to $20. So for everything, you get more and more as you go up. So definitely check out our tiers and join our Patreon family because we love you guys. <laughs> yes, we love our Patreon family so, so much. And we yeah. enjoy giving them extra, extra stuff to look at and do and listen Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And our drunk dives are so funny. And I hate oh that God. everybody hasn't listened to them because I think it's yes. like our gold. Like, it's yes. just like <laughs> peak podcast. So you need to join and listen. You mean like yeah, and drunkenness? <laughs> yes, and starting this week, our drunk dives are actually going to be videos instead of just audio. So you'll get that extra added thing to see all of our facial expressions. And you can finally see our wild hand gestures because they oh, are God. wild and everywhere. So it'll yes. be a really good time. Yes. And possibly pissy because we are correcting things in this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm probably be flipping off the camera here and there. Okay. <laughs> yep. It's a thing that's going to happen. Just prepare yourself. So um, we are always and forever listening or looking for listener stories. Look, I've been drinking. Um, <laughs> and to do that, you can send us your stories at historicalafpod at gmail.com. We are also going to be filming our extra episode today just to get that out of the way. And we've got some awesome listener stories. So we want all of your stories. If you want to tell us about something funny or weird or whatever that has happened in your family history, something in your hometown, something where you live now, anything and everything, please send it to us. Absolutely. Also, you should check out our merch store. We have t-shirts, mugs, bags. We even have bandanas for your pupper dog. So you should definitely check it out. And if you're going to raid Area 51, you need some alien merch. So definitely check out our shirts. And it is at Oh, shit. <laughs> Shop.spreadshirt.com slash historical AF pod. She usually says that part. I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. And also, please follow us on social media. We do memes and meet your makers and we do all kinds of stuff. And we love for you guys to talk to us. So we are historical AF pod on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yep. And yep. we also have a YouTube, but I don't know that one because we're not big enough to have like a simple name yet <laughs> yeah don't ask me because i don't fucking know so um yes <laughs> oh, google look it up yeah google us google. Google, look us up on youtube yeah <laughs> but yeah so that is episode 16 and we will see you next week hell yeah bye bye, bye. <laughs>